Brooklyn Independent Television. Welcome to In The Zone. I'm Michael Bellamy. My guest, special guest this week is Dennis Big Time McDermott. He's also a graduate of St. Francis. He was drafted by the Knicks in 1974, and he's the only player to have his jersey retired. St. Francis basketball player, right? Yes. Let's start. Dennis, welcome. Welcome. What well, are you doing these days? Well, right now I'm uh, back at St. Francis College as the alumni director for the last ten and a half years, and uh, you know trying to get uh, alumni involved, uh, you know, with St. Francis College, and uh, we've been pretty successful. Uh, we have a great alumni base that you know support the college in many ways, and we're happy, and we you know hope they continue to support so I can have a job for another ten years. You know, <laughs> let's go back to your, especially your, your basketball career during high school. You played at St. Francis Prep. I played at St. Francis Prep. Uh, I went to, uh, uh, well, I grew up uh, in downtown Brooklyn here on uh, uh, Carroll Gardens, it's called now, and I went to St. Paul's Grammar School. From there, I went to St. Francis Prep for four years. I played on the Varsity B for two years, my sophomore and junior year. And this was during the what, uh, 70s? Uh, uh, the late 60s, Okay. my sophomore and junior year. And um, when I played on my sophomore year at the, uh, you know, vars uh, Varsity B, you know, I get into a game once, I get the inside position. And uh, the first game I ever played organized ball, and the guy missed the shot. And I went up, I grabbed the rebound, I go up, and I missed it. Right? And I'm running down the other end of the court. Coach calls timeout, and he talks to me, and right, he, he gives me a little quick you know, tap to the chest. I shot at the wrong basket. He pointed me in the right direction. <laughs> I was Coach Jack Monahan. He pointed me in the right direction. Ever since then, I've been just shooting. Uh, you know, I figured you go into a gym, you see a basket, you just shoot. You right. know, that was it. So uh, between my junior and senior year, I grew about three or four inches. So uh, I got a little more interest. Uh, the varsity coach became more interested in me, Jack Prendeville at the time. And I played on a varsity team. We finished third in the city that year behind Powell Memorial, who had a couple of, uh, you know, really good players, Ed Searcy, Lenny Elmore, and uh, uh, Archbishop Malloy had uh, uh, Brian Winters, and, uh, who went out to South Carolina, went on to a great career with the Milwaukee Bucks. And uh, we finished third that year in the Catholic high school. And a number of the guys on my our team went to St. Francis College. And then uh, I was fortunate to get a scholarship to St. Francis College because my mother worked there years ago mm -hmm. in the college in the cafeteria, cleaning tables and all. And um, you know, they just you know, g gave me a shot. You know, it was going to be a long shot. And uh, I uh, improved you know, through hard work. I improved. And uh, I started uh, my freshman year. And Ed Aquan was the coach back then. And I remember he telling me, you know, like, Dennis, you know, when you catch the ball, you have to be able to do three things. Mm -hmm. You've got to be able to dribble, you be able to pass, and you be able to shoot. What, real quick, what was a high school basketball scene? Describe it back then when you were. Back then, I mean, it was. Comparing it to now. That's, you know, I still get into discussions that with people is that it was, uh, I think there, were, uh, there, there was definitely more uh, participation with the student body, okay? More people were coming to the games and, uh, uh, you know, the, the student body coming to the various games. You know, they didn't care. I remember when I was like a sophomore in high school or, uh, you know, going up or a freshman even, going up to watch games at Fordham University where they used to have the uh, tournaments, mm -hmm. you know, like the, uh, the playoffs. And you're watching like guys like from uh, LaSalle, John Roach, Tom Owens. Uh, for, well, uh, Rice had... Uh, Yelverton and mm -hmm. uh, you know they had good teams up there. Dean Membringer. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. And then uh, with uh, you know St. Francis Prep had uh, the Jimmy O'Brien, who eventually went on to coach Boston College, and uh, Brooklyn had uh, back then uh, um, Bishop Ford had Gene Mumford, Kenny Charles okay. from Brooklyn Prep. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was exciting. It really was. You know, just to, and I remember those days. And um, it's funny you asked that question. Back in 1988, uh, 1998 and 2000, I was the athletic director at Severian High School. And I remember we were trying to get, you know, students to participate to come to a game out at St. John's. You know, we were fortunate someone, you know, gave us money, you know, uh, and a one just said, you know, let, we'll get a bus, you know, take the kids or something like that, and here's the tickets. And it's just like the participation is just, it's not there So anymore. there's student apathy, I mean, really. It's, uh, it's well, you know, or, I think or, now or the students, students are so involved. Much. They have so they much? Have to, they're involved in, uh, you know, other things now. I think with the, uh, you know, with, you know, technology and the computers and all is, uh, they're doing different things, which, you know, it's a, a, th it's a topic that we address at St. Francis College all the time. The students that are not involved in, say, 
extracurricular activities or uh, sports, what do they do? Mm -hmm. You know, if they just go back, you know, we have housing for our students at the uh, Hotel St. George. Do they just go back to the hotel and, you know, and I know uh, our dean, um, uh, Dr. Howe, is working with the students to always have them do different activities and all. But back then it just seemed like, well, you know, you're younger and you're looking at things. Sure. It, it was unbelievable time. And you didn't care where you went, you know. You, you went and in the last couple of weeks, there was some bad incidents. I know in a, in a public school had right. a, a situation right. out at South Shore. And uh, at Bishop Lachlan. And recently Bishop Lachlan recently. But as far as the student apathy, where do you think that comes from also? But, you know, when we come back, I'm going to talk about also your biggest opponent you face, your toughest opponent, and also the toughest team you face at the high school level also going into college. We come back right after this. Welcome back. Joining me in the studio is Dennis McDermott, who is the director of uh, alumni at St. Francis College, also a damn good basketball player at St. Francis from 70 to 74. At the high school level, who was the toughest opponent you faced during that time, during the 60s? Uh, I didn't get on a court that much, as I said, in high mm -hmm. school, but I have to say, you know, you had uh, Malloy, mm -hmm. they had uh, uh, Kevin Joyce, mm -hmm. okay, and Brian Winters which we like, they were fantastic and went on to become pro, uh, great college careers. And Kevin Joyce went on to play in the Olympics. Uh, uh, Billy Schaefer from uh, uh, St. Uh, uh, went on to St. John's, played mm -hmm. at Holy Cross High School. And um, who, uh, well, in a, when we played against uh, uh, Adrian Dantley, we played against DeMatha. Okay. And DeMatha's and, and located in D.C. In D.C. Yeah. And... Uh, I don't think uh, my shot didn't see the basket, you know, when uh, he just blocked it like uh -huh. that. It was easy, and he was a strong guy around the basket. And he went on to Notre Dame. He went on to Notre Dame mm -hmm. in a great college career, and mm -hmm. I believe he's the assistant coach in the pros now. Right. Is, uh, and also, oh, I never played against him for that time period. Uh, well, we played against uh, uh, Lenny Elmore from uh, Powell Memorial and Ed Searcy. They were really competitive mm -hmm. guys, and they had a great team, you know, at the Powell Memorial back then. So, but as I said, I was coming off the bench, and uh, by the time I get into the game, those guys were like, you know, uh, on their way out of the game. They scored their 40 points. But it, as far as the different various tournaments during various tournaments during the summer, you faced people like Fly Williams, right? right. Fly Williams, when I was in college, you know, I played, you know, with Fly Williams, and uh, and then also uh, Jocko, Jocko, Greg Jackson, you know, which we mentioned before, right. from, who's doing a great job with the Brownsville Boys Club now, They're giving back to the community. And uh, and then I, I w in college, uh, uh, I was able to go up and meet the, a, f a fellow by uh, Floyd Lane, Floyd Lane, who coached at played at City College and coached there, and coached at a couple of various high schools. Who is a tremendous man, mm -hmm. tremendous man, and um, played uh, in the backcourt. Never forget with a guy uh, that uh, everyone's familiar with him, Nate Tiny Archibald. Oh yeah. So you never ask Tiny for the you know, the ball. You know, he <laughs> like one time there was a guy like saying he got the ball. He hit the guy in the head the next three times down the court. And uh, Johnny Mathis, who you know from uh, uh, JFK, Kenneth, uh, JFK, John, you know, playing with those guys. Uh, you know, I said to someone in Brooklyn once. You know, I knew they wanted to you know just get you know get out of Brooklyn. Let me just uh, see if I can improve my game. The next night they had me up in like uh, up in the South Bronx in a gym playing against, uh, you know, like a pickup games. Mm -hmm. Earl Monroe, John Shoemate, uh, as I said, Tiny, mm -hmm. we were playing with him. And uh, the, the rest is history. You know, I, and it's like anything else. You know, you want to, you know, improve yourself. You got to, you know, try to hang out and uh, play against the best. Now, during this, when you played college ball, you played in the Mecca Conference? What was we it? played in the Mecca that? Conference for uh, a couple of years, my sophomore and uh, junior year, which was a small little conference. And at that time, some of the schools, uh, colleges were in Division One. We played with uh, Lemoyne, Siena, and Scranton. Mm -hmm. Okay, Iona was Division One, and then ourselves. And actually, uh, I think uh, my junior year, uh, they that conference broke up because I think that's when it was going. Like, we had to play more Division One programs. Now you played St. John's against St. John's. How competitive were you guys against St. John's? We were uh, okay. So mm -hmm. I don't know. You must have read. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I gave a speech once when I was in, uh, inducted into the basketball old timers in 1980, uh, 1997, mm -hmm. and Mel Davis, who I'm you know, um, friends with now, he was in the audience, mm -hmm. and Le Mel's saying, who the hell is this guy, right? Uh, we lost by 57 points to St. John's. He scored about 38 points against okay. us. So that was, I was looking up that the other night, our sophomore year, 
And then we got a competitive our junior and senior year. But St. Francis always had a relationship with those schools through uh, athletic director and former basketball coach, uh, Mr. Dan Lynch. So we would play Providence. We would play, uh, you know, Iona, Manhattan, and as I said, St. John's. And uh, it was ironic in my eyes at uh, one point after I was coaching at St. Francis as the assistant coach when I, got out of, when I graduated for a number of years. And then I started doing different things, and uh, Coach Conaseca call, uh, called me and offered me a part-time assistant mm -hmm. at St. You know, John's. At St. John's. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and for some reason, I, I just told him, I said, Coach, we're still friends and everything like that. I said, you know, the red and white just, you know, doesn't look good on me. I got to stay with that red and blue, <laughs> you know. Wow. As far as the state of, when, when you look at overall your career, what were some of the successes you had also on the court? Well, as everyone said, I mean, it's just like, uh, you know, I was, uh, you know, a good scorer uh, mm -hmm. from outside shooter. Uh, they say not much of a rebounder, which uh, I don't think I was, is um, when I look back is uh, the success because of hard work. Mm -hmm. You know, like people can always tell you, I mean, just working at the game and everything like that is, uh, you know, winning. Uh, uh, we won that conference that mm -hmm. one year, our junior year. Uh, we uh, went on individual awards. You know, I was like top 20 in the country uh, a, couple, a couple of times. Mm -hmm. You know, as a scorer, uh, went on to uh, win a couple of uh, tournaments, uh, not tournaments, uh, uh, all tournament teams. Toughest opponent? Marvin Barnes. We'll talk about that when we come back right after this. Welcome back. Joining me in the studio is Dennis McDermott. And then when you played basketball, at St. Francis. You said your toughest opponent was Melvin? Marvin Barnes. Marvin Barnes. From Providence. Bad News Barnes, as they used to call him. Right. right. Mm -hmm. They had, uh, we went up there is uh, our senior year. And when was this, like what, 74? 74. 74. Mm -hmm. 74, and he was, uh, Marvin Barnes was the third all-around uh, third all -around pick in, the, the, NBA Providence, in right? the NBA draft that year. Okay. Bill Walton was number one, Tom Burleson, I believe, from North Carolina, North Carolina State was two, and then uh, Marvin Barnes. So you were, you were in good company. I was in uh, good company, but I didn't stay uh, too long out there. <laughs> okay. So we go up to uh, play uh, Providence our senior year. We played them our junior, uh, when they had Ernie D. Gregorio, a sophomore year. He Ernie was D, the point guard. Ernie yeah. D, they, they had some team. Played Boston Celtics. Right. Mm -hmm. So we go up to our senior year, and uh, I'm like, you know, top 15 in the country in scoring and all like that. Mm -hmm. Ma Marvin, uh, I'm, we're loosening up the whole thing. No Marvin Bonds. Marvin Bond shows up like um, two minutes before the game, walks into the locker room, was eating a hot dog and a popcorn, eating some popcorn. That's the way he loosened up. Came out, went like this. I'm figuring, okay, I'm like, you know, top 15 in the country scoring. I come out, I take a, you know, 12-foot jump shot. Uh -huh. He blocks it, uh -huh. all right? A couple more down, down the court. You know, the se uh, second time I go to 14 feet, he blocks that. After the fourth shot, and I was like almost at half court, and that was it, you know, but... Uh, he was a competitive guy, a lot of talent, uh, and as I said, was the third all-around pick that year in the uh, NBA draft. Now, you were drafted by the Knicks. Drafted by the Knicks in the eighth round, uh, thanks to uh, uh, Dick McGuire, who was the, you know, a great basketball player. In 1974. And a scout, 1974. And uh, Greg Jackson was also, Jocko Jackson was uh, drafted that year. And uh, uh, I believe a Rudy Jackson and... Uh, uh, Jesse Do uh, Doc uh, okay. was also, right? So when I go to try out, you know, I tell people I'm a world traveler. I figured, okay, the Knicks uh, uh, drafted me, and we went to try out over at Pace uh, okay. downtown uh, Manhattan. Okay. So we try out down there, and then we may also, we went down. They just had the rookie camp down in Monmouth, New Jersey at the time. So uh, after two or three days down there, Coach Red Holzman comes over to me and, uh, you know, said, you know, I think it's, you know, time for you to get a job. And I look at him I'm like, I'm looking for a job. I figured, you know, like, uh, I told Coach Holzman that years ago when I was working on Wall Street, I was out one night at the Nick game, mm -hmm. and uh, he was sitting a couple of rows in front of me, and I went up to him. You know, I had a suit on and the whole thing. I mm -hmm. said, Coach, years ago, and we had a mutual friend, Red Saracek, uh, who was a great, you know, basketball mind in New York City. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I said, Coach, you know, years ago, and he looked at me and said, well, it looks like you got a job, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but you're not going to be playing for us, you know. <laughs> How long were you there? I wasn't there very long. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we we had about two or three days at Pace, and then mm -hmm. the following week we went down like three days down at uh, Monmouth, and um, and then that was it. And my roommate, 
who went on uh, when I was trying out for the uh, Knicks, who was a great guy, and he just got inducted uh, a couple years ago into the um, Basketball All-Timers Hall of Fame, is Ronnie Nunn. Okay. Ronnie Nunn played at uh, George Washington and I believe uh, Brooklyn Tech over here, and he went on to work in the NBA office for a number of years. He was an NBA official, and then he was uh, the supervisor of the officials. I think overall with basketball or anything with athletics, which uh, you know I, I capitalized and I was fortunate, is that you always get to meet you know people, class people. Mm -hmm. Like you know just not because of you or something like seeing you down at St. Francis or mm -hmm. something like that is, and I really uh, I get excited about that. You know like the the people that I have met through athletics. basketball, through mm -hmm. athletics. I mean, if I didn't you know play uh, sports or anything like that. Uh, you know, I wouldn't uh, be in contact with these people. And it has lasted a lifetime. Like I'm saying here, you got a Mel Davis or Bill Schaefer from St. John's beating the hell out of us, you know, like, and then all of a sudden, you know, like here's 25 years later and we're having a drink together or something like that at a social. So that's the uh, the good part of uh, athletics, which I think, you know, high school, you know, which we talked about before, high school students should try to, you know, be more involved with that. You but know, they say like, high school students today are so lazy, basically. Not all, but 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 most of them are not. And I don't think. Inclined. I mean, uh, I worked at a private school, mm -hmm. uh, at Packer Collegiate Institute, which was an all-girls school uh, before I started there. I had 15 boys on a high school. One boy came up to me. I was trying to start a basketball team, and he walked up. He couldn't make the pr uh, tryouts the day before, and he came up to me and he said, uh, uh, "You know, the next day he wanted to try out for the team." So I figured if he walked up a flight of stairs. You're on a team because we only have 15 <laughs> boys in high school. But he, uh, but uh, what we used to do with the girls at that time, they, you know, they had teams, uh, you know, uh, uh, schools, private schools mm -hmm. uh, from this New York, you know, because poly prep wasn't co-ed at the time. Okay. Is you know, and what they used to have, they used to have like you know cookies or, or cider afterwards. So they just they mingle with each other because 20 years from uh, when they graduate from high school, they're going to be doing business with these people, you know, and it was. Or anything, you know, like I, I spoke to Greg Jackson, uh, Jocko Jackson, uh, uh, three, four months ago about something in the community. He put uh, on the phone Ronnie Jones, who I played with at St. Francis College, you know. Mm -hmm. But that's just, it's like we're talking like uh, it was yesterday. Right. You know, it's not, you're, you're going to get through, you know, forget all the, uh, hi, you know, hi, how are you? Right. Then after that, we're going to get right to the right point. Right. You know, we're right. not going to be like, hey, <laughs> you know, because we know where we came from. <laughs> that's right. Well, real quick, the state of high school basketball, the state of college basketball today, in a few words. Can you put it? I think, you know, with the AAU coaches and all these AAU tournaments, and uh, I think it really took away from, uh, you know, uh, the high school coaches. You know, not that they're doing a bad job. Right. The AAU, I think they have to get on the right program, that they have the AAU tournament, they have their high school season, okay, and uh, it's, which we said before, a college coach, or uh, sometimes not even his high school coaches, their life relies on a, you know, a 17 or an 18-year-old, what they're going to be doing. Right. Especially when it comes to recruiting, which right. we have a number of stories about that. We'll do right. that another day. <laughs> Dennis, thanks for coming. Thank you very much for having me. And uh, I'd like to have you back again. Please. I appreciate right. it. Thanks. All right. All right. And that's our wrap up for us here. I'm Michael Bellamy. Take care. Have a safe week. Watch this and other Brooklyn Independent Television episodes online at brickartsmedia.org/bit.